wearing plastic goggles over its eyes. I could see its eyes inside these tinted goggles and it had holes on either side here but it had no nose as I have. Its jaws were very small and its mouth was a slit with tiny little scale-like things where its lips should be. And the creature carried a horrible smell on its... I can't describe that smell. It was a metallic, chemical smell which seemed to combine the smell you would smell when somebody is burning brass or copper and a very ugly chemical smell. These two smells combined. And this creature was looking down at me. I was frightened, but I could not move. And the next thing I knew was a terrible pain on my left thigh. It was as if somebody had just stabbed me right to the bone. I screamed and I tried to jump away, but my body was my body was inactive. I could not move. I was not tied to any chain. I was not chained to the top of this table. There was no belt tying me, but I could not move my body. And when I looked down at what was happening, I found that one of the shorter creatures had driven something very painful into my left thigh. And then, while I watched, horrified, the creature pulled out this thing, and I saw that it was like a pencil made of shining metal with what appeared to be a flexible uh, uh, cable at the back. And before I could do anything, sir, my head was seized by the creature above me. It caught me on either side of the head like, like this. And then a four, a second, that creature drove something into my right nostril here. It was as if I had been shot. The pain was so terrible, sir, that I screamed and screamed. Blood filled my mouth. Blood spattered out of the nostril. And the creature did not seem to care. I was, I was stupefied. The pain was so intense, so terrible. And then, quietly, brutally, the creature pulled out the thing that it had stabbed in me in the nose with, and blood flowed into my mouth, into, 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 out of my nostril, and I was choking. And then the big creature coldly turned my head this way, so that blood came out of the mouth and which gave me some kind of relief. And after what seemed like an eternity of pain, the, the creature brought something out of somewhere, which looked, it looked like a, an old-fashioned tea strainer in appearance, and it put this thing close to my nose. And then I seemed to drift away and the pain subsided. You know, sir, it was torture so intense that even now I can't describe it. And then something else happened. A fourth creature started rummaging between my legs and it pulled out my organ of manhood and stuck something into that. It was very strange, but I wasn't feeling any pain now. 
but I could feel the, the flexible cable moving inside me, right into my body. And then, ugh, I can't describe it. It was as if my seed was being sucked out by this small, bright, flexible cable. And then the creature just pulled it out. I screamed and I cried and I screamed, but I could not move. And then something happened, which to this day still amazes me. After the creature had pulled out the flexible cable from my organ, the creature just stood there looking at my organ. And I was so terrified that I urinated and accidentally urinated against the chest of the creature. It jumped away as if I had shot it and it stumbled backwards. It, but its face didn't show any expression. Its mouth didn't even open, but the way the creature reacted, trembling all over, it was as if I had really hit it. But it was wearing this kind of garment. And after that, sir, I was left alone, except for the big creature which stood to, one, to my right side this time with its arms folded, looking down at me. And then, while I was looking at this creature, trying to appeal to it, no pain anymore no pain, please, I was pleading. Pictures suddenly flooded my mind. Pictures of buildings sunk in a red, in a red lake of, of water. Buildings rotting away. Buildings that appeared as if they had been bombed. And cities sunk in terrible mud. Trees sticking out like rotten ghosts, trees without leaves, without branches, sticking out of the mud as if they had been poisoned. I saw visions of this. And then, through an entrance which I had not seen before, came a strange and terrible being. It was exactly like this. It was tall, made entirely of metal, with burning eyes and a snout. It didn't do anything. It just moved and came to stand at my left side. It didn't touch me or anything like that. It just stood there, making a strange humming sound. Wow, 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 like that. And then, say, from behind this metal creature, there appeared another creature. It was so radically different from the gray creatures in that it looked exactly like an earthly human being. It had a pink skin like that of an, a, a white woman. It had golden hair and its ears were definitely pointed like those of an animal. Its eyes were slightly slanting. They were pale, pale blue and never once did they blink. It was like this, mute, and there was a tail-like appendage at its back, which was very visible as it walked away after it had done to me what it did. What this thing did, it climbed over me and made love to me. And I noticed that unlike normal women, its breath